Welcome to another edition of Len's Burning Bush. I am Len Harvey. Before I bring on my guest for the week, I want to talk about what's really burning my bush. So when I was a kid, back in the old days, Saturday morning was filled with wonderful cartoons like Scooby-Doo, Laugh Olympics, Josie and the Pussycats, and Justice League, just to name a few. As I got older, though, more animated series started popping up like The Simpsons, Family Guy, more of an adult variety. But to be honest with you, it was never really for me, never really embraced it. I know The Simpsons has been on forever, never really watched it that much, never really enjoyed it. So I'm probably one of the few that, that do not care much about that. I, I like the simple Saturday morning cartoons. Well, now I am dealing with a new craze. Have you seen these latest cartoon challenges being shared on social media now? I mean, it, is, it wasn't bad enough that we had the endless parade of selfies and photos of everything that anybody ever does in life on Facebook and every social media platform. Now we have to sift through everyone's cartoon version of themselves. Now, just like the Bernie memes, the first hundred or so were tolerable. That was okay. After that, I really, come on, I'm done with this. Let me just say, no one wants to see a normal picture of you all of the time. And although the cartoon version is quite cute, enough already. So, of course, I had to check to see if anybody else felt the same way about this that I do. I, I just, I don't know why. I, I really get that uh, once in a while. I don't need to get validated that I am, you know, just a curmudgeon, right? So I found an article written by Alyssa Bain on HITC.com. I just looked it up. I, as they say, I Googled it. Um, now, she did a great job discussing the brand new trend that's going on, as I mentioned, called the Cartoon Challenge. She mentioned something that I have talked about before. But in 2021, the world is obsessed with social media challenges. And this must be stopped before it actually hurts somebody. I mean, it's just enough already, right? So let me explain a little bit about how this works. For those of you that might have been living in a cave and don't understand um, how this works, and maybe you were wondering, involves this specific filter to turn your profile photo into three different cartoon images. It's all the craze, of course. All the kids are doing it, as I like to say. But first, they download an app. It's called Voila Al Artist Cartoon Photos. That's Voila, V-O-I-L-A. So in case you want to do this after, that's what it is. You open the app and you tap the 3D cartoon. Then you press Allow Access. This is what scares me. You allow access and select photos on your phone. Now, is this really a good idea? We all have Ring apps. We have all these things that everybody can look into. I just get worried that somebody's going to get hacked. And, and this is what this is for. This is what companies do, um, and they get into your system. But now you choose a photo, and then you turn it into a cartoon. Seems like a good thing, right? Well, it was, and again, the first hundred times. So in Alyssa's article, she gets to the real reason I was looking for. Who's angry? Who's upset? Who doesn't like any of this stuff? Some people enjoy it, and others, like me, find it pretty annoying. So one person tweeted, and this was good. The latest stupid Facebook fad is here. People making cartoons out of their profile picture. It's about as dumb as putting dog ears and a dog nose on yourself. And again, that was not me writing that. That was someone else. And, if I, and somebody else wrote, if I see one more cartoon Disney version of someone on my Facebook feed, I'm deleting my account. And a third person added, thought for the day, I wish everyone on my Facebook would stop turning their profile pictures into cartoons so here we go. Let's end the madness. The only cartoon I want to see is Scooby-Doo. So later, of course, I'm going to change my profile picture to scooby dooby doo With that being said, it's time to bring on my real guest, certainly not a cartoon version of herself. She is the spokesperson for the Metropolitan Transit Authority, or known as an acronym, which I hate acronyms, which you know, Meredith, but I hate, you know, it's, it's known as the MTA in New York. Former radio anchor, she is a good friend. Let's bring on Meredith Daniels to Lens Burning Bush. Meredith, are you as tired as I am of the cartoon people? I'm I am, but first, as as a spokesperson, I have to say it's the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Oh, I am so and sorry. And that's okay. No, no. But really, who cares, Len? Oh. Um, <laughs> this is about the cartoons. Um, so I've just started seeing this, and yeah, a couple of my friends have done it. And the only thought I had was, okay, 
you've just made yourself that much more good looking and taken, you know, the wrinkles out and this and that. But yeah, if I'm going to pick a cartoon, I, I don't want my face. I think I want someone else's face. And I certainly want someone else's body. Like if you're going to go cartoon, I want that like busty Wonder Woman type of cartoon. So yeah, it's just another look at me, look at me, but now I'm a cartoon. I love that you went busty woman, Wonder Woman. Can I tell you that? I, <laughs> I've, I, just I, set, I've just sent women back about 15 years. You did, years. you did. You, okay. you, you really yeah. did. Um, uh, listen. <laughs> it, it, you know, where's the where's the lasso? And I swear, I will tell the truth. I will tell the truth. <laughs> Make me tell the truth. Uh, like Judy Jetson, another one. They, the, the way they, you know, made her... Um, uh, exactly. Kind of a real thin, everybody was uh, in cartoon yes. world, um, you know, or in the Flintstones, they had so many, uh, and Margrock, you know, um, yes, they, you, know, right. you can see, <laughs> these are the things that I right. can remember. Forget, right. Forget his mother-in-law with the crocodile bag. Yes. He went with Anne Margrock. Yes, yeah. Okay. Anne Margrock and uh, twist, twist. Uh, but, but anyway, the cartoon version of themselves, I just, I get worried that everybody gets involved with these apps. And I think all of these apps are designed to take information from us and just we pretty much, you know, do anything anybody tells us now. Right. I mean, you know, hey, but, but this is a social challenge. There's somebody out there that makes money on this that is doing it right with the hashtag cartoon you yeah. know, challenge. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, we're once again, we're very much about look at me, look at me. So here's a new way that you can look at me <laughs> and it's now cartoon me. Yeah. I mean, I, I get involved in something. I mean, I, I post, we all post pictures of things that you're happy about or, you know, my daughter graduated high school, although I like to say that 99% of the people graduate high school, it's not that big of a deal. But anyway, um, you know, my daughter it's that got 1% though. It's I know, I, right? We were, we were, it, 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 it was touch and go with my daughter. But anyway, um, but you know, you post pictures and you, you want people to see maybe family. It's kind of a nice way mm -hmm. for you guys to keep in touch. Like we haven't talked to each other in forever, but we keep in touch on Facebook and it's kind of nice for that reason, like people can see yep. pictures, but a selfie every day, a cartoon version or, you know, I rant and rave on this show and I, I've got, I'm a curmudgeon, I know that, and I, I bitch and moan about things. And, and again, first world problems of the things that bother me, but I have people that are on Facebook that are so negative all the time, it drives me nuts. Like everything is, oh, I don't feel well today. I don't this, send me, send me prayers because I didn't get out of, you know, I can't get out of bed right now because I'm so tired. Like, I mean, come on, really? The the vague book stuff really drives me nuts. What about you? Yep. No, I, I totally agree. And I'm going to be honest. I took I took Facebook off my phone just so, you know, during my commute, that's not what I'm looking at because it does. It it start. we won't even get into the political stuff, but it starts to um, enrage me after a while. And it also starts to bore me after a while. It's like, OK, I get it. You're packing your stuff to move. You've been, like you said, complaining about this for four days. We've all had to pack at some point. Um, yeah, I, I'm. Listen, I'm glad to see your kids graduate. I'm glad to see uh, we can catch up. But the, it's it, yeah, the vague book, the small things are just they are they're annoying. Um, yeah. Like everything else, people go above and beyond. It's always like you know everything in moderation. We don't need every detail. I don't need to know nope. what you're eating every night. Uh, we just need to know that you're safe and everything is good and you're feeling okay and the family's good and that's what we want. Yeah, yeah. So, There's a big celebration. Hey, that's great. But yeah, no, the the, the mundane every day. We, we we all do it and we all live it and yeah, and here we are. Here we are. Here we so are. one of the things I always talk about on this show is the fact that I am from New York and living in Kentucky and the pizza is not good, right? So <laughs> we, you know, as New Yorkers, right? You know, so Marissa, you're still in New York. So you, you understand yes. that pizza is, you know, like the, it's so great because you can fold it, walk with it. It's something you can, people don't understand. You can actually walk and have lunch in New York. You can go to the hot dog cart, grab a hot dog walk. You can grab a pizza slice and you just can yeah. walk with it. And I just love that about New York. And one of the things, pizza is always a big thing. So toppings on pizza always kind of irk me a little bit and, I, and I'm gonna, okay I'm gonna, yes i'm gonna bring this, this is, up this is this, this is, is good source subject yeah Go. Yes. exactly so I, I mean i'll tolerate pepperoni on pizza and green peppers is good um but let's start you know mushrooms are all right but a, as we like a regular good slice in new york is good without anything like you could just this have a true. regular slice people don't understand that you don't need so any company out there that puts all of these things on pizza they're masking the fact that their pizza really sucks and 
it's all good eventually. I mean, it's it's sauce, it's bread. It's there's nothing wrong with any of it. Even bad pizza is still tasty. But the point is, we don't need toppings on pizza. And I bring this up because Kevin Bacon. I don't know if you saw this, but he was uh, apparently receiving a lot of mixed emotions on on social media because he shared what he puts on pizza. Now, what would you think Kevin Bacon would put on pizza? I would have thought bacon, right? Well, yeah, we're, we're, I, that's exactly what I thought. Bacon, sure. Yeah, well, apparently he likes salmon on pizza. And I'm thinking to myself going, I love lox on a bagel, right? With miss, cream cheese, with yeah. With cream cheese. But I, I, I'm not going to disparage it because I've never had it on pizza. But is, you know, is salmon a good choice for pizza. Now, Kevin Bacon obviously can do whatever he wants, but people were getting, of course, people get up in arms over everything, but salmon on pizza, what are your thoughts? Okay, so, you know, let's let's start with the first thing. There's sauce on pizza. We're not ordering salmon parmesan or anything like that because salmon doesn't belong with sauce, I think. I think salmon is more of a... Um, a lighter delicacy with a cream sauce or a caper or some cream cheese. I don't think you put tomato sauce with salmon. Um, and then, yeah, the mozzarella cheese and salmon doesn't seem like a good combination either. No, I'm going to go no salmon on pizza. No. I would agree with you. But again, Kevin Bacon could do it. See, this is the great part about pizza, the debate. People like pineapple on pizza. I like to see the uh, meme that comes out with what do you do with, with pineapple on pizza? You take the pizza, get it close to the to the to the trash, and you throw it out. Um, that, that's kind of kind of what you do with pineapple on pizza. Although my daughter, of course, she didn't grow up in New York. She likes the Hawaiian style pizzas, which has the you know there's meat on it and there's pineapple. I I will I will say that I've had pineapple on pizza. It's not horrible, but I wouldn't put it on a good slice from New York. I would not do that. No. I put it on like, no. you know, the frozen pizza that you get home, you know, that you, you, you know, maybe it's Bar Red Baron or uh, those pizzas there, right, that you get from the store or um, it's not, uh, what is it, DiGiorno, another one, right? Those are right. decent and pizza. I'm nothing against them. I, I wish, you know, they don't sponsor me, so I don't really care. But um, but I, I do enjoy those pizzas, too. I think you can enjoy all kinds of pizza. But if you have a really good slice, if you're living in New York, or New Jersey right now, or even Florida, although the water is not good in Florida, but you can't make a really good pizza. If you you enjoy just a regular slice, a really good New York-style slice, and I'm not even going to bring up Chicago because that's kind of a dinner. That's not even pizza. Yes, yeah. right, right. Yeah, it's, everybody always yeah, calls no, it, right? You, listen, when we order pizza, uh, my husband, uh, you know, I'm married to an Italian-American from New Jersey who, How you, you know, his... <laughs> How you doing? His vegetable of choice is, you know, pork. Pork, that's his vegetable. So everything is, you know, cured meat. So he likes pepperoni on pizza. I have no problem with pepperoni on pizza, like you said, sausage, occasional meatball, occasional mushroom. But yeah, a good plain slice speaks for itself, and you can get a lot of good plain pizza here. Um, yeah, the salmon, I'm, yeah, no. It's it's actually, I, I could really go for a, a bagel with cream cheese and lox right now, but not not some pizza. Yeah. No, I, I mean, we, we've talked about the six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon. This might be a seventh separation. We might need to separate him from the pizza people. So, yeah, no, no, yeah. no salmon, no salmon on pizza. So, <laughs> no salmon. No salmon Send for it you. Upstream. Yeah, Send no it upstream. Yeah, no salmon for you. You come back one year. But but anyway, uh, as people, we, we haven't talked in a long time, we, we you know, we worked uh, together. Uh, I, I bring on a lot of the people we used to work together uh, at the Metro For Fortune Off building, I like to say. The uh, <laughs> kind of that, that building uh, should have been condemned. Um, yes. But, but we all had a good time working there together. It was fun. And it was a long time ago. I mean, you know, I've been out of there for over 20 years. And one of the things that I want to make you feel a little older, Meredith, of course, you're only 29. But I wanna, um, yeah, I wanna if make, only. Yeah, I want to make you feel older. Uh, do you know that Ferris Bueller, the movie, yes. is now 35 years old? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Yeah. Voodoo Listen, economics. I, 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 can, I can believe it, I guess. There was just a friend's reunion on, and my daughter's watching this show for the first time, which, you know, well, she's probably too young, and I'm a bad parent. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but, um, but think about it. Yeah, they, we're getting older. But you know what, Len? We're getting older, but we had some good stuff when we were younger. The fact that we lived in the Ferris Bueller 
friends kind of era and people are still new kids are still watching this now for the first time shows that we had the childhood and the teenage years and the and the 20s and it was fun and yeah so yeah i just went off on a tangent no. so yeah ferris bueller's 35 years old i, I love that you went on a tangent because it reminded me of something else this is what's great about this show we have no kind of we don't care right mm-hmm. you reminded me of something my daughter again turned 18 and do you know what movie she loves? The one of the most she loves is Back to the Future. So yes. I, my son, gave me for um, the holidays. Uh, we'll call it Hanumas. Um, <laughs> right, we have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I got the DVD set. But one of the nice things now is you don't need a DVD anymore. They gave you the streaming access to movies to go or whatever it's called. Movies, movies anywhere. I think it's the movies anywhere app. So of course everything's an app, right? So yes. we have all three movies that we can stream at any time. So, of course, it's on all the time anyway. If you, It's kind of like uh, watching, like, you know, Andy Griffith's always on. Well, Back to the Future is always on, too. But anyway, she goes ahead. It was her birthday. She goes, you want to watch Back to the Future? And it's like, oh, my goodness. It's like, you know, you start to almost have a tear in your eye. Yes, because, thank you. Thank you. And, and please, Hollywood, do not remake this movie. We do no. not. I mean, I... I, I love the people that were in it. I love 1.21 gigawatts, Marty. How can I have been so careless? You know, I Man, love... Man, I've never heard you do that. That's Christopher Lloyd would, would be very proud of you. Yes, that's amazing. Uh, well, well, you know, I, I enjoy it so much <laughs> that I, I have to keep doing it. But no, Mar- I love Back to the Future. It's one of my favorite movies. I, and it's funny, my, my daughter and I were talking yesterday about which one we like better. She likes three. And I like one. I, I have to go with one, yeah. Yeah. She doesn't like two. She said it's kind of scary a little bit. It's not really that good. I didn't understand what she meant by that, but I two is a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit dark because if you look at the two, they yes. go back to it. So, so I guess that's what she's talking about, that it's a little bit dark. Uh, but Back to the Future 2, uh, not as good, but still out, outstanding. Um, I find it funny, though. That, uh, of course, in Hollywood, it's kind of like um, with Bewitched, they recasted Darren and didn't tell anybody. They re- <laughs> right. Yeah, they recasted Jennifer, and all of a sudden, it's Elizabeth Shue. It's like, hey. And it's funny because yep. she yep. says in the se- in the first scene of the second movie is she goes, Marty, you're acting like you haven't seen me in forever. <laughs> or you haven't. You know, <laughs> right, or, you, right. You know, yeah, yeah, well, right. I, I haven't because it's a whole new actress. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, it, it's kind of, kind of funny. But I love the movie. I, Michael J. Fox just turned 60, so let's make you feel even older. Oh, yeah, and I had a crush on him when I was younger, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, I always liked Elizabeth Shue, personally. I liked her in Karate Kid. I liked her in, you know, she's been great in Leaving Las Vegas. Elizabeth Shue, if you're listening, I'd love to have her on the uh, the podcast as well. I've, and Cobra Kai, she was, yes. so we're, you're on the topic of, you know, bringing back, and okay, Ferris Bueller turns 35, and it should be, okay, only we care about this, but here's a whole new generation of people watching the karate kid so to speak because yeah. cobra kai's on and they didn't grow up with karate kid for us it's total nostalgia and i love it i love it daniel son you paint the fence you know that's i love i love that too i i remember seeing that in the theater there's a couple of movies in my lifetime that gets you excited or when you know the first rocky movie aft at the end you were so pumped up at the end of that movie as a kid you know i remember running you know, with friends, just like then, then, then that the music, mm-hmm. just that was one. But Karate Kid was another one. Yeah, you know when you're the best around. Around, yeah, and we're all trying around. to do crane, yeah. the crane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's funny because you you have, um, you know, of course, Daniel Larusso, who is uh, it's escaping me now, Ralph Macchio, right? Macchio. Yep. He was uh, in My Cousin Vinny. He's been in a lot of things, and but he'll ever always be known as Daniel Son, right? And then yeah. he's recreating Daniel's son now, and I think that's fantastic. I think you do what you do. I I like that people embrace um, the character that they were. I do not like the Hollywood people that kind of step away from their character. Like George Takai, um, you know, he loved the fact that he played Star Trek. I mean, just yeah. just embrace it, Batman. Embrace it. A- Adam West was always, you know, the rest in peace, Adam, but... He was always he he embraced the Batusi and all of the silly things from the show. And, yeah, and, absolutely. And, and he, so just enjoy it. And I think Daniel and 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 now you know having uh, William, was it William Zapka right? Is, is, yeah. Is, uh, so 
again, these are Who, the from things. a female standpoint, aged pretty well. I'm, I'm gonna say, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, That's you, another thing we're watching it, and we're like, hmm, Billy Zapka, good for you. Yeah, like I said, Elizabeth <laughs> Elizabeth Shue doesn't look too bad right? either. I, I, there I, you I'll go. say that uh, again, going back to the fact that Meredith, please help me get Elizabeth Shue on Lens Burning Bush. I think we need to uh, we need to discuss all of these things that she was in because I, I like I said, I always enjoyed her Adventures in Babysitting. Was <laughs> another Thursday funny movie. Babysitting. Yes. There, that movie came out in 1987, um, and and it, just a tremendous kind of silly, stupid movie, but was so good. Such classic lines in it. Um, Don't f with the babysitter. I always remember that. But that when nobody leaves this place without singing the blues. I right. mean, yes, you know, no class. You know what? I think 80s movies probably have. You know, aside from a, a Casablanca and, and something like that, but '80s movies have—they really do have classic lines. They really do. It, it, I, I kind of miss that. Yeah, I kind of miss that. I do too. And I think what happens is a lot of the people growing up today—that's why I love the fact that my daughter, my son, all look to these older movies or look to older music. Because you need to learn history. We didn't grow up with with uh, Count Basie Orchestra, but we can tell by listening to it, it's fantastic, right? So Absolutely. you need to learn about what came before. And a lot of people don't want to do that growing up now. And I think it's a mistake. I think you need to learn a little history. And the fact that now we're getting people to watch the old Karate Kid movie because they mm -hmm. remade it with Jaden, whatever. I, You know, not good. You know, Jackie Chan, it was okay. But it, it ruins it for me. When you have yeah. a remake or the one with Hillary, is it Hillary Swank? D Swank? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to say yeah, Duff, agreed. but I, I don't know which one's which. Um, but yeah, I, I did not like that one either. I think you just need to keep the basic thing. You know, uh, Pat Morita was the perfect, you know, sensei. And you don't need to go any any uh, any further than that. Why do, no. why are we Listen, reinventing I, the I wheel? Got, I got annoyed. Yes, I got annoyed when they when they redid Willy Wonka. I mean, oh God, I love yes. Johnny Depp. He's a great actor, but don't do that. Gene Wilder was Willy Wonka, and that's the only one. I even introduced uh, the newer one to my daughter, and I, I, I prefaced by saying, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to like it. It's and dark. I didn't try to sway her opinion, but she's like, yeah, no, let's watch the original. No, There's the, no reason for it. The original is so much better. In, in in the newer one, Johnny Depp almost appears to be a little creepy with children. And I, and yes, I, and I look yes, at that, right? there's that. There's yep. that. Mm -hmm. But the first one was just so iconic. You know, the snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> um, yes. You know, it's yes. like my favorite line, and I use this, you know, it's my favorite line, and I use this all the time, is candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. I love that, and, and there's so many right. good lines, but it's like, Daddy, I, I want an Oompa Loompa now. Um, and nobody, I think it was Jack Albertson, uh, she's a vermicious knish or something. Yes, right? yes, yes, that's um, right, that's right. Um, and that, that was, you lose, good yeah. day, sir. So <laughs> what was funny about that movie is that when we were kids, and again, Meredith, I know you're only 29, but. Right, but, you know. Let's imagine. Yeah, yeah. let's imagine you were older. And you watch the movie as a kid. We had to watch it on TV. There was no DVD player back then. There mm -hmm. was no VCR until later on in the 80s. So we watched it on television with commercials. And it was on yes. like once a year, right? Like Wizard of Oz was. It wasn't on. Yes. on there's no such thing as on demand. We watched it. And it was like, I, I, I want to say that it was either around Christmas time, Willy Wonka. I don't remember that, but... I would watch it and just be in all this movie with the chocolate and the and, and and just be, you know, where the songs and, you know, oompa, oompa, oompa dee dee. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, no, it, it's I great. just so I think that Ed, if you haven't watched the original Willy Wonka, you, you really need to. There's certain movies that you have to go back to. And, you know, it, it just makes for good things like I went ahead and did watch the original Casablanca. And I hadn't watched it, and I just watched it recently. Wait, you like, say original. There's no remake. I know. No, no, no. I meant, oh, I meant. Oh, you yeah, just scared I just, me. I, I apologize. I just went back no, and watched okay. Casablanca. I apologize. Yes. And I enjoyed it, and, and I had never really watched it from start to finish, but that's why I love, um, was it Turner Classic Movies, or what's, what's the- Yes. Uh, uh, I think American it or No, it's AMC, American Movie Classics, and one of those. They, they've got, I think it's Turner. It has where they pretty much don't do a lot of commercials during the show. And they put it on, and it's, um, it, you know, there's a lot of good movies on there. You know, some like it, Hot I Watched, and some other. And I'm watching it because my 92-year-old father-in-law is with us, and he, he 
likes a lot of those movies. So I try to, you know, put something on that he'll watch as well. And I get, I get hooked on this stuff. I, I really yeah. enjoy it. We watched the, uh, I don't know if you ever watched the, the Thin Man movies. Um, no. They were, they were kind of crime movies in the, from the 30s and 40s. And basically, it's Nick and Nora Charles as a, as a uh, wedding, as a married couple. And Nick is the uh, detective. You know, it's kind of, kind of a, it's a comedy slash mystery. Uh, but very, okay. very funny. The Thin Man also. And now we're kind of dating ourselves. But there's some good stuff. And then, of course, television, there's some bad stuff. And I wanted to bring this up as we continue the rant. We're going to go right into exactly where I wanted to go, which is amazing how this works out on, on radio. But after 14 years, Meredith, 20 seasons of this, which I can't understand, 270 episodes, what is wrong with society? But the long-running series, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, is finally <laughs> over. How in the world, in God's green earth, that this show lasted 200 and 70 episodes. How many episodes did Friends do? I, I don't think it was 270. Maybe it was. I don't know. It was 10 seasons. It was pretty close to 270. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I can I can honestly say, and I'm proud of myself for this, I don't think I've seen one full episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. No. We, I, I, I have just, never. I, I have never watched it. And it's not something that I'm interested in. And thankfully, it's not something that my nine-year-old was interested in, um, because for her, it would have been more, I guess, you know, Kylie and Kendall Jenner, because they've made their way uh, as more popular with a younger generation than the Kardashians, the originals, the OGs. I don't know. Um, OG oh, did when, <laughs> when the when the show first started. Um, yeah, it's. That's something that's really I'm going to let you talk because I think I'm speechless. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy uh, it's, Kimmel it's amazing. Uh, the other night actually made a funny. Sometimes Jimmy can be funny. Um, he did make a funny. He called this both a major milestone in reality TV history and the rear end of an era. I thought that the was the rear end of an era. It's, I, I yeah. thought that was a little bit creative there by Jimmy. Of course, he, he probably didn't write that, but I think it's funny. Uh, but that that yeah that I mean that's basically what what started all that I, I, I'm, her her butts insured I'm sure yeah. um, but it, it wasn't it it was a Kim Kardashian sex tape wasn't it that yeah. started all I mean how did we know Kim Kardashian we we knew only the fact that uh, that Robert Kardashian was part of the OJ trial that's right. how this all started and then he passed away and then all of a sudden the you know the mother and all they became this media mongol mogul right, right. not mongol did they, did they need or, the money. I, I, I mean, did he not leave enough money? I don't, well, I, don't. I would imagine maybe, you know, things weren't as good as, you know, whatever. But uh, I know they got divorced and the whole thing. But anyway, one other thing, one other movie from the 80s or, or that, no, this is from the 90s. So I'm going to I'm going to go into the 90s a little bit for you, Meredith. The movie mm -hmm. Clueless. Do you remember the movie Clueless? Uh, as if. As if. Exactly. So <laughs> Alicia Silverstone. Right. That's that's mm -hmm. what we thought her name was. But she just came out recently. She's 44 now. So she's been around uh, Hollywood for probably 30 years. Would you say 30 years? Yeah. Okay. yeah that's... Apparently, we've been saying her name wrong this entire time. Alicia? Is it Alicia? It is, it, it is Alicia, not okay. Alicia. So I've heard it both ways. Okay. Alicia is how it's pronounced. A-L-I-S-E-E-U-H pronunciation <laughs> guide, so you understand. But it's yes. Alicia... Not Alicia. So is it is it Silverstone or is it Silverstone? I just want to make sure I have the last name. I correct. think it's still Silverstone, which is okay, made good. up anyway, which I'm sure that's made up. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> possibly, but possibly you're I mean, call Alicia. me crazy here, which I know I am. But 40 years we've been calling you Alicia. It'd be like everybody, you know, they call me Glenn, which I let people do once in a while because they apparently hear Glenn instead of Len. Mm -hmm. Yes. I let people do that, but I wouldn't do it for 40 years. So, you know, what's in a name? I, I, names are very important to people. And I'm married to a man. Let's, let's just, I, I kept my last name. And this is one of the reasons why Glenn, um, <laughs> <laughs> you pronounce this. This is my husband and my daughter's last name. C H A N. 
G-O. Chango. Well, yes, it should be. It is not. It's Chango. Chango? Yes. I'm like sorry. Presto I'm Chango. sure you love it your husband, not. but I, he's oh, wrong. He's wrong. Oh, no. he's. To- this is why I didn't take his last name, because he's wrong. I'm like, I can't have a wrong no. last name. This is, there is no other word in the English language that has a soft G sound followed by an O. It's almost as annoying as in Kentucky that how would you uh, pronounce C-A-R-A-M-E-L, which is sauce that you put on ice cream, or how would you pronounce that? C-A-R-A, caramel. But caramel, people say right. caramel. I, they sell caramel. Like yes. in here, they say caramel. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I was at a restaurant uh, the other night, and the waiter came to us in my daughter's birthday, and they like going to bring a, a thing. She goes, and he goes, would you like some caramel with it? I said, hold on, stop, 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 stop for a second. What did you just say? And he couldn't understand what I was talking about. I go, what did you mm-hmm. just say? And go back. No, I said, go back to where you were putting some kind of topping. What is that called? And he goes, caramel. I go, no, 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 no. It's caramel. If it wanted to be pronounced caramel, it'd be spelled C-A-R-M-E-L. It is not. It, you put an extra A and it's caramel. It is chango, not chango. Okay. Well, there you this go. is also, this is your New, New Yorkness. Um, yes coming back to because you know you do have those regional pronunciations like the p-r-a-l-i-n-e i I say praline Praline. if you go to if you go to new orleans new orleans which i love new orleans they say praline so it it depends do you do you stick to your guns on this so are you gonna call my husband mr chango is that what you're saying uh, I and probably Alicia. just, I think I'd just call him, <laughs> I think I'm just going to call him Nick if he's okay with that. <laughs> oh, he's fine with that. Yeah, All right, no. good. Then it's Mr. Change if you're nasty. That's yeah. Good. Oh, I like that. I like that. Change Okay. We'll have to get used to that. We have to get used to a lot of stuff. And you know, it's funny. Um, this show kind of just, about, you know, kind of goes each week on a, a ta- different tangent. We, we, we went and we just keep talking. It's, it's just a great little thing here. This is stuff we didn't think we'd talk about. When we had on, but Meredith, it's been too long. We've got to make sure we do this again. Um, we didn't uh, talk too much about our radio day, so we have to come back and maybe do another show to kind of go into the radio thing. But I think we talked Good about everything to. that was important in life. 80s, <laughs> yes. 80s movies, uh, whether or not it should be Chango or Chango. I think mm-hmm. that is exactly uh, the stuff. Now, you can like Lens Burning Bush on Facebook at Lens Burning Bush. You can follow at Lens Burning Bush on Twitter. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please hit the like and subscribe. You can look it up under Len Harvey with the hashtag Lens Burning Bush. Uh, we're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, iHeartRadio. You can ask Alexa to play Lens Burning Bush. We're on uh, Stitcher. Pandora even said to me that we can be on. So I'm on all of these things. So I don't know why, but we are, you know, right? So happy anniversary to you, by the way. How many years of marriage? Thank you. 17. 17 years. Wow. And they never had a fight. That's amazing. It's, this uh, morning, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I got you a little bit. I got 25 years. And, you know, I always like to say you have the diamond ring, the wedding ring, and the suffering. But anyway, there's it's a lot of good <laughs> things. But happy anniversary. As I say, Thank mazel you. tov to you and your husband. It is a pleasure to have you on today. And please don't be a stranger again. This was, no, this was a lot so of fun. No, good to talk to you. Enjoy yeah. brunch. Because, you know, in our 50s or you're thir- 29, you're married right. an older man. We, instead of making dinner reservations, we make brunch reservations because we want to make sure we can day drink. Is that pretty much what, what the reasoning for brunch is today? This sounds about right, yeah. So, so <laughs> Bloody we're gonna, Mary or mimosa well, is this, definitely this, in my future. This way you could still be in bed by nine. I, 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 totally, I totally get yeah. it. That, that's it. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> thank you, Meredith Daniels, and uh, I'm Len Harvey, back with another episode of Len's Burning Bush next week. So long.